Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking you through exactly how to make this environment, all the different steps and give you a couple tips to be making your own environments similar to this. Let's go. Okay, so first I want to talk about this part, which is part one, and this is called the blockout. So this is what you can see is my first like draft idea of all of this. I think I had some simple sketches, like usually with my environments, I do some simple sketches. I got like a Pinterest board, like find some things where I like look the like the look of or stuff like that. Uh, and then I start blocking out with some simple shapes. So very easily, this is like a, a quick tip if you want to make uh, like mountains or stuff like that. Um, just take a sphere and start pulling it around. You can see this is literally what my shape is. It's just a, a sphere. And I just use the remesh tool um, in the sculpt mode. And then you just start sculpting using different brushes and you can get like a quite a nice shape for your, your thing. And then just use a decimate and then you can get like a nice low poly thing. And what's nice is you can change it. Like you can change it later on if you want to just like change the, the shape. You can just go pull up a brush and then start like adding to it. Uh, but yeah, that's how quickly you made this. And yeah, so this is the whole layout. And as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can, let me make the background a bit brighter. You can see here, I have this uh, like rule of thirds set up. This is basically help you kind of choose your composition. So you can see here, I'm basically just setting that I want this to be kind of be my focal point. Uh, and this can be like a secondary. So it's just kind of lined up with the the rule of thirds. If you want to like learn more about the rule of thirds, look into it. It's quite like a, it's just a composition rule to make stuff look nicer. Um, but usually you want to have like your focal point on this. Um, and another thing I want to also look at is having like leading lines within your environment. I'll talk about this a bit later and show you more examples as I go through the environment. Um, but basically like, yeah, you can see I have almost like a, a loop going up. So if I want to make this my focal point and bring attention to it, you can see I have it on the this part of the rule of thirds. And you can see also everything kind of like pulls up towards it. You can see, so everything kind of leads your eyes up. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about more of that later, but that's just something quite cool to keep in mind and will really help you make better environments. Uh, yeah. So that, I mean, that's most of the first thing, but the block is basically get your layout, get your kind of thing done. Um, in this stage, depending on the environment, I like setting up the lighting. So with depending on the ones, I will go in and start doing the lighting now, which I wish I'd done because I really struggled doing the lighting on this project. Um, and that's why I think it didn't turn out as well as it could have was purely just because I didn't do the lighting now at this block out. Because if you can get some really nice lighting, especially with low poly, like now, then you can make something that looks quite like nice later on. Yeah. So let me go on to the second one, which is just refining it slightly. So you can see here, I have some simple materials and have some of the, the water set up. Uh, I think I changed the camera angle, which was actually a bad move. Uh, it doesn't look that good, but let me just pull it back slightly uh, and maybe even adjust it. Like I think it would even be a better camera angle if I moved it over slightly. So you can see there having something like this. And you can see it's basically very similar. I'm just setting up like very simple shapes. This is just to give me more of an idea. You can see this is literally like a very simple thing. And I think I like duplicated it up or whatever. Um, same here, like these buildings are all just the same shape, the same roofs. I think I have, what, three different buildings uh, and just duplicating them around. Um, basically just trying to get the shape correct. And I think one thing that I've managed to mess up quite badly on this project was the scale of this. Um, and I think this is something that you should like look into quite a bit. So if I go add in a cube, um, this is a two meter tall character. So if you can see here, like this is two meters tall and this is how tall the buildings are. So unless the buildings are very small, then this is like, it should be quite a bit bigger, but like slightly bigger. Um, so like if this is your like person standing uh, over here, then this house should be a bit bigger. So it should be like, maybe like that heart or whatever. Um, and the other thing is having these walkways, because if you look at this, this walkway is quite long. So if that's two meters, this thing is like 20 meters long or whatever. So this is a pretty massive uh, like stair, stair or whatever. So, and I think trying out with the view navigation, walk navigation, going through with this, you will see like how long it is and how how high up as well, like the difference between these two heart wise. If I take this cube and drag it down, almost lining it up like that, 
it's like 20 meters. So climbing 20 meters is actually quite high. Um, and it's quite a big distance. So I think trying to set your scale correctly, uh, if you have a low poly character, you can pull that in, put it in your scene, uh, or just add in a cube and say, like, this is what I heart of a person. Uh, maybe you can make it like slightly, uh, like shape like this, be like, this is what human proportions are. And this is what you need to set your actual scenes as. Uh, but yeah, that's just a, an extra tip. Yeah, so that's not like, I mean, that's the majority of it. I'm basically just like shaping it more. Like I'm just adding area for this water, um, getting all these like pond parts going through, um, send all of that up. Just got some simple materials. You can get viewport materials. So if you just go to material tab, viewport display, choose a color um, and just get start getting some basic materials in um, just so you can see like what your actual scene is going to look like. Uh, which I think is actually quite useful. Um, yeah, but let's go look at the third version. Cool. Um, oh, no. Actually, this is the final one. So this is kind of where I just started adding in basically just extra detail assets and uh, all of that stuff. So let me actually get rid of these clouds because they're quite annoying uh, and I can actually start breaking the scene down. Let me get rid of the lighting and talk about that a bit later. So you can see here, this is my uh, finished scene. Uh, I think I added in some extra things. You can see like statues and stuff. Uh, I basically made a bunch of them. But basically with your assets, if you want to save time, make them as modular or as reusable as possible. Like if you see here, I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 blah. All of these houses. If I had to make an individual one for each of these, I had to make two and that's all of it. Done. I could have just placed it around. If I want to make a new island over here in this corner, Make a new island, bam, 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 done. All the houses are done. Maybe I'll go grab some of these lanterns, like, ooh, the lantern. The lanterns are gonna be the same on this little house and on this, like, island. So I can just add, the, add those things in. I want a new tree. I use a skin modifier on it, which is quite useful. Um, so you can see it's basically just like a little uh, a plane like this. I think I use a skin. Um, actually looks fun. Uh, usually I'd like use a decimate or something, but it, it looks pretty good. Skin, like if I want to get a different di different tree shape, just grab it, pull it over, like stuff like that. So you can see these are very also very repeatable. These things will all be um, reused. So you can see like all of these assets are quite reusable and modular. So, and, and this can be done for quite a lot of your scenes. You don't have to make in everything uh, different. And even stuff like this, I'm pretty sure I would have used a similar base, uh, like for the bottom. I would have been using very similar shapes, maybe even use the same roofs, stuff like that. Um, that would all be repeatable. Uh, so that's what I mean by modular. So even if you can't reuse the same assets, like I'm not using this exact building, um, if I set up this like this top part and this bottom part correctly, then I could probably reuse them for these. Um, so you can kind of just like start mixing and matching. You can also do those characters. You can do those everything. Like if you can like start taking different models and like pushing them, like pushing them together. That's when you can really start making a bunch of new stuff that looks really cool. Uh, while also saving a lot of time because you just want to get your game done. You want to make some good looking assets. Why not just take less time, be smarter and make something beautiful. And then you can get on to making your next project and making more money if you're freelancing. So yeah, that's just a, a good uh, quick tip on that. Um, yeah, so you can see I've like managed all of these. I've put them in each like category. I don't usually do that. Like I don't name them whatsoever. Like you see, it's just cube, 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 cube. Um, uh, I found it quite funny. So it's but just a bunch of like unnamed objects. Um, but yeah, I did start putting them in collections just so I could start hiding stuff. And like you see like the, the clouds and lighting, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, let me actually start walking through the lighting. So I have a couple like what's called practical lighting and yeah, actually, it actually lights up quite a lot of the scene, which is just all of these little um, these little lights over here. Um, and this is also something, is having, uh, remember I was talking about the leading lines and whatever, uh, having a focal point. You can see here, if you look at the scene, everything's kind of blue and dark over here and then at the bottom, whereas it's kind of like brighter up here and a more orange. So it kind of starts leading your line towards that. And you could exaggerate a lot more um, have like, even if you tone these lights down a bit, I would say, um, to get it looking a bit better. But it's something called value patterns, which is basically just like, if you look at your your render, like a black and white, what is the brightest and darkest parts of your, your thing? And the brightest parts will be usually the stuff that you look at, or at least having contrast in that. 
So usually I'd have a brighter part or have a contrast in the color. So if everything over here is blue and you have this little pop of orange, you'll like bring your attention. Um, but yeah, that's something I thought about quite a bit with this uh, render. And another practical is just water. Like my, my scene is just looking a bit boring. And then uh, I just decided to add a mission to the water and I'm like, damn, that looks cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's literally what I ended up doing. Um, yeah. So then I added some lights in. Let's see how many I have. I have four lights. Um, you see, like, it basically just brings some more lights into the rocks and stuff. Um, and as I said, it didn't, I didn't, wasn't very happy with the lighting of this one. There's been a lot, uh, there's been other renders there. I've had a lot more lighting that, like, looked a lot better. But I'll go into lighting a bit more in another video. Uh, but you can see here, I just have this big area light over here. So that's, oh, it should be build it up. So... You can see this big area light is just blighting the rocks over here, just giving like a, basically a key light. Uh, if you've looked into like product renders and stuff like that. Uh, then what is the second one? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, if you flick it like on and off, you can see it's almost like a little fill light filling in this like edges over here, not making it uh, as dark. Uh, I'm not even sure if I like it. I kind of want this part to be a bit brighter, uh, but I'm not sure about having this part brighter. Uh, let's see this the third one. This is just like a little edge to keep this part a bit highlighted. Um, so you can see here, it just kind of like lights up this little edge over here and these like plants and stuff. Um, just keeps it a bit brighter. And then this last one. Oh, this is a sun lamp. Okay. Is this even working? I think it is. Okay, so you can see there's these highlights over here are actually from the sun lamp. Um, so that's all like a directional light, um, which I think I actually quite like, especially like this little uh, part of here. Um, but yeah, that's basically literally all the lights. It's quite simple. Um, and then I just have some clouds in the background um, to kind of just like fill in the background, make it like not as boring. Um, but it didn't actually turn out that well. Um, yeah. So let's actually go back to the leading lines and stuff, which is something you got to like look for in your environments. If I pull open this camera collection and go sort of walking through them, you can see here, like, I've picked out a couple of different camera angles, um, and I've also used the same uh, rule of thirds. You can see, like, here, um, here's the rule um, here. So I kind of have, like, this is my focal point. Um, and then the leading lines, I have basically, uh, oops, um, let me get rid of all these annotations. I have the leading line going up like that. And if you see through the render, you'll start seeing, I think the clouds kind of cloud, like confuse it. Um, I should have, I found some other renders of it, but um, you can see here, like you can kind of see it's quite a clear, uh, like going up that way. And you can kind of see it like it leads you, like you have these bright areas, bright areas, bright areas. Um, and if you were actually like walking in the scene, like through it, uh, like this, you can see like this would be your thing that you go walk up here. And as you can see, I was like, we'll talk about the scale. That's pretty bad. Um, you go there and then like see there. Um, and then you can also see like your, your main area. Um, but you also have a, like a browser part there. Uh, so you can kind of like start picking that out. And if you just do static renders, you can also see just how I've kind of got all those, those leading lines going up, uh, going like that, going like that. Um, this one's not, this is a okay render. It's not great. Uh, this one's pretty decent. Nah. I like this one, but I think I should have had it like maybe wider. But I think it's also just the scale of my scene being bad. Um, so if I had something, actually, I mean, even, even like something like this looks a bit better. Uh, but yeah, it's just not a super great thing. I should have had a bigger gap here or something more enticing to lead the character on. Uh, and then this next render. I actually kind of like this one. Not really a reason. It's not even a good render. Um, yeah, you can see, I don't have much like contrast or anything, but I just have this big broad thing and like some nice path leading up. So it kind of gets your character to go up there, but it doesn't look very interesting. Uh, it's not very great for your environment. Um, but yeah, so I mean, here's my main render. You can see I've got that exact, this is the three point rule. I kind of wanted to like shift it over to the edge. You kind of have like almost like a balance in your scene. Um, cause like if you have it like straight on like that it's kind of just in the middle kind of boring uh, having that shifted over can be kind of cool uh, 
Yeah. If you would like to book a one-on-one coaching call with me, check us out, uh, link down below. You can get a hour or 30 minute med session booked with me and I'll help you with any of your renders, any of your problems. Check out the link, first link in the description. Cheers.